by its rod. And this one's called How to Always Be Joyful and Peaceful with Jesus. Well, the way to do that is to put your mind on good Jesus and not just on the evil world. Jesus never stops being good. You can put your mind on him if you want to and feel good thinking about good Jesus in an evil world. It's got to be an evil world, but you don't have to put your mind on it and forget about good Jesus. Put your mind on good Jesus, not the evil world. That's how to always be joyful and peaceful with Jesus. What does the Bible say? Be joyful always. Rejoice in Jesus always. Jesus has tried to make us happy if we'll let him. If we thought about how awesome and good, praiseworthy Jesus is, we'd be pretty happy now. Not just thinking about how evil the world is. We're in a spiritual war with Satan. He wants us to put our mind on the evil world and feel bad instead of good Jesus and feel good. We're choosing what we want to think about is most important in our mind. Evil world, good Jesus. Choose good Jesus. We're supposed to think about the evil world, but we're not supposed to let it bother us. It's supposed to show us how great Jesus' salvation is from it. To rejoice in. Jesus' job is to try to help evil people become good and joyful. If you want them to. Jesus never stops being good and joy-giving. The Holy Spirit never runs out of joy. If you want to be full of joy in Jesus' presence, you can be. If you want to have perfect peace, trust in Jesus, you can. Jesus never stops being able to, to perfectly take good care of us. When I went to a missionary school called YWAM, we went down to Honduras to do some evangelism. And my job was to make a Satan puppet. So I had the Satan puppet, and it was called the Joy Stealer. And it would try to attack another puppet that was a girl rabbit or something. Mine looked like a snake or something. Trying to get her to not be happy, not to be joyful and believe lies. Once she learned the truth and said, no, Satan, I'm not believing those lies. I'm going to believe Jesus' truth. She started being happy and peaceful. As long as she was believing Satan's lies, she was fearful and depressed. That's why we need to get into the Bible, let Jesus teach us his truth, and believe in it, and have good emotions because of it. And meditate on it often, and resist the devil trying to get us to think lies that make us unhappy, instead of Jesus' truth that make us feel happy. I had this vision one time of, I was stepping in the elevator, and I thought I was alone, but just as the doors were closing, somebody snuck in and stood beside me. I said, who's that? I wonder if I could trust them. I looked over, it was Jesus. And then I thought, hmm, can I trust him? And Jesus came over to me and said, I want to take all your sins away and fill you with joy and peace. And I thought, that's a good Jesus. I can trust in him. And then he told me to show me my back scars from my back pain or something. I had back surgery many years ago, so I lifted up my shirt and showed him my back scars. And he said, I love those scars. I love your suffering back pain. Because it makes me who I am today. If I didn't have back pain, I wouldn't think I needed Jesus very much. Because of the back pain, I go to Jesus and I find the peace, the joy, the help to deal with suffering and problems in this world that I would probably never have found if I didn't have suffering in my life. It's like uh, suffering love gets the greatest rewards in heaven. Jesus wants us to experience suffering like a Job experience, like uh, Satan sifting Peter like wheat. <laughs> Like my back pain, like Joni Erickson taught in a wheelchair. It's not supposed to stop us from being joyful and peaceful. If the sufferings could drive you closer to Jesus and save you from hell, they're good for you. And when you get to heaven, there's going to be great rewards for those who continue to have faith in Jesus and continue to love and obey him through the suffering. It's like uh, 
my suffering love awards. I had this vision one time. I was like a queen on a throne in heaven. And Jesus was coming up to me like the bridegroom. And he was giving me all these gifts. You could call them rewards, I guess. And they were for all the, the loving, suffering things I let him do through my body. And we were going to celebrate them in heaven forever. So he, he's giving me these gifts. I'm saying, I don't deserve that. And he says, this reveals how much you love me, Rod, when you let me do suffering, love things through your body on earth. Not that they were something harmful to me. That there's something good in heaven to celebrate forever. So we need to believe that suffering love can get the greatest rewards in heaven if we want to always be joyful and peaceful with Jesus during suffering circumstances. Satan tries to tell us, if you're suffering, Jesus can't be any good, Jesus can't be real, or something. No, you can be suffering, and Jesus can be helping you through it. It's like a motto I have. i got to live in an evil and suffering world, but Jesus can help me through it, work it out for my good, make me happy in it, and help me not to be bothered by it. It's like a vision I had one time. It was like uh, World War III and people were getting killed with bullets and everything around me. But I was dancing with Jesus around it. And I was thinking, Jesus, what's going on? And then he said to me, don't let it bother you. I control it. If we don't think Jesus controls everything at all times, even though it's an evil and suffering world, we're not going to always be joyful and peaceful with Jesus. we got to believe that he wants us full of joy, praising him with the dance. doesn't matter how evil the world is. Jesus controls it all. He's trying to work it out for good. It doesn't have to bother us. The world's been evil since Adam and Eve. <laughs> it's going to continue to be evil until Jesus comes back and turns it into a good land for his bride or whatever, his remnant. And that's where our hope and our joy can be in, that uh, we don't have to live in this evil land forever. Jesus is trying to help us to get into a good land to live forever after we die from these bodies, have a new earth. My future looks bright with Jesus forever. We need to think about the cross to understand how to be joyful and peaceful with Jesus. What Jesus is doing on the cross is taking all our sins away. Like Jesus saying to us, I want to take the punishment for all of your sins for you. I want to give you my perfect gift of righteousness, as righteous as I am, as a gift. We can't be in the presence of a holy, sin, hating God with sin on us. But he can cover us with his righteousness and his forgiveness of all sin through his cross. I just took communion. It's good to think about the most important thing Jesus ever did for me. Die on the cross and take my sins away so I can go to a good land in heaven forever once I die. The problem is that it's hard to find any teachers that teach on how to be joyful and peaceful with Jesus. There's a lot of prophets out there. They just talk about like the gloom and doom of the wrath on the sinners or whatever. The tribulation and the end times. But Jesus doesn't want us bothered by that if we're his bride, his children, his friend. He wants us full of joy and peace. The Christians should be the happiest people in town. The church should be the best party in town. Filled with joy and peace. That's the witness to these people that are in depression and fear with Satan's lies in their mind. We're trying to tell them the truth to set them free. Jesus can make you joyful and peaceful and take all your sins away today. That's the evangelistic message. With a smile on your face, not a... Look how bad it is on my face. If we choose to believe in Jesus' truth, we can be joyful and peaceful with him. Jesus is trying to say, read the Bible, let me teach the truth through it, meditate on it, believe it. And you can have great emotions believing the truth of Jesus. Stop thinking like Satan wants you to think, look how bad the world is, God can't be any good or real or something. We need to choose to believe Jesus' is truth of joyful and peaceful emotions. He used to believe Jesus is truth like he is love. I think everybody is looking for love. Jesus has got all the love you need. All you need is Jesus' love to be fulfilled with love. 
He's a thousand times more loving than any human being can be. Nobody else has died on the cross to try to take my sins away. Jesus did. He's all powerful. He controls everything at all times. He lets people make free will choices. About 90% choose to follow Satan into hell. Go down the broad road of destruction to hell. A few people choose to be his friends going to heaven forever. We decide do we want to be following Jesus into heaven or Satan into hell. We decide. That's what makes it such an evil land. Most people want to follow Satan to do evil instead of Jesus to do good. Jesus says, love God and love others. Satan says, hate God and hate others. Jesus can always give us whatever we need whenever we need it. Jesus can always give me ten times more than I need. I'm not trusting in my bank account. I'm trusting in Jesus' bank account. I'm not trusting in my muscles to fight my enemies. I'm trusting in Jesus' muscles to fight my enemies. And his angel army, too. You feel safe and happy and peaceful with Jesus if you want to believe the truth about Jesus. Jesus can protect us with his angel army that's always with us. Don't just, because you can't see it, don't believe it. If the word says it, believe it. Jesus and the angels are with me. Jesus could turn my enemies to dust anytime. Jesus can work out the evil that people do to me for my good. You always win with Jesus. It's a win-win with Jesus. It's a lose-lose with Satan. With truth. I could be safe in a fiery furnace, a lion's den, at the Red Sea with an army chasing me with Jesus. Psalm 91. Everybody can drop dead around me. I'm still happy with Jesus. Like that uh, dance with Jesus around World War III, dead bodies piling up. Don't let it bother you. I control it. I'll work it over your good rod. Be joyful with me. Dance with me. He loves to see us praise him with a dance with a smile on our face. Maybe I'll put up a video about that one time. So, Jesus is trying to tell us, put our mind on good him. Don't care too much about the evil and world. But don't forget about it. Jesus is both mercy towards his friends and wrath towards his enemies. It's a balance. You can think about the wrath on his enemies, but it doesn't have to bother you. You can think about the mercy of Jesus and celebrate it. And the other people are choosing to be evil, enemies of Jesus, unhappy and hell-bound with Satan. They don't have to think that way. Look, uh, I don't have to think that way. We could choose to be joyful and peaceful with Jesus even if nobody else wants to. We don't have to wait for our parents or church leaders or something to teach us the truth or something or teach us how to be joyful like they are because most of them aren't very joyful. We could be joyful and peaceful with Jesus even if nobody else around us wants to be. Jesus could teach us how to do it if we want to learn his way to be joyful and peaceful with him always. If we had a meditation like, uh, all I need is Jesus to be happy, we'd be a lot happier. The world isn't going to make me very happy, the creation, but the creator Jesus can. In Jesus' presence is a fullness of joy. The Bible says, be joyful always, the fruit of the Holy Spirit's joy. If we believe in it, we can receive it. If we doubt in it, we'll miss out on it. It's believing the truth makes you joyful and peaceful with Jesus. Believing the lies makes you fearful and depressed with Satan. Jesus is in perfect control and wants it to be a free will voice in evil land. <laughs> Who wants to be my friends? Anybody or nobody? Who wants to be my enemies? Everybody? Fake stuff. We got to think that little children who die are happier than we are in heaven. I won't die till Jesus wants me to die and he can help me through death. He'd like to probably take a lot of children to heaven that are suffering on earth now. Not to think that he's doing something wrong by allowing children to die or anything. He made them. They're his children. He can make them happy in heaven forever. I don't deserve any of this anyways. It's a free gift for me. It's a free gift for a child or whatever. Well, the children before the age of accountability can go to heaven, and the wicked adults after an age of accountability that choose to be Jesus' enemies can go to hell, but it doesn't have to bother me. My enemies don't get away with their evil. There's a perfect justice judgment for them in the future. I'm just supposed to forgive them and love them and uh, let Jesus deal with them.
He's the judge, not me. He gives me free gifts. I try to teach others. You can get free gifts from Jesus too. You want joy and peace? Jesus can give it to you. <laughs> but if you don't look like you got any joy and peace, how are they going to believe that Jesus can give them joy and peace? Christians should be the most joyful and peaceful people on earth. Telling other people how to find the joy and peace from Jesus. We can be like a superman or a superwoman with Jesus. You can feel like a superman with super God, king of the universe, Jesus, living inside of you. Nothing too difficult for him to do inside of me. All we're supposed to do is seek Jesus, listen to his voice, what he wants to do through our body, let him do it with his power to do it, and good things happen through our body. We can't force anybody else to believe in Jesus or obey him, but we can do it ourselves if we want to. We need to believe that we can be perfectly provided for and protected by Jesus. I trust in Jesus' bank account, not mine. I trust in Jesus' muscles, not mine, to defeat my enemies. Jesus is like a perfect father, perfect husband, perfect friend. That's what we're looking for. A perfect relationship spiritually with the God who created us. Not just a, a good relationship with a human being or something. Which people that don't have a good relationship with Jesus are looking for to try to fulfill them. And it won't fulfill them. It's a satanic lie. You need a good relationship with Jesus to be happy. Not a good relationship with some human being to be happy. Get your happiness and joy from Jesus and share it with other human beings. Don't be trying to get some joy from them. Which could cause a lot of sorrow because most of them are demon controlled today <laughs> like a demon controlled church to go to or something they're following Satan more than they're following Jesus Jesus loves me so much that he has nail scarred wrists Jesus wants to be close to me his prized creation so much that he suffered and died on the cross to take the punishment for all of my sins for me to try to do it Jesus isn't saying stay away from me. He's saying I want to be close to you and marry you forever. I want to be your perfect father, perfect husband, perfect friend today. I want to fill you with joy and peace today. My nail scarred wrist. That's how much I love you. That's how much I want to be close to you now. Not you're too bad. Uh, you're too sinful. I want to stay away from you or something. If you don't have faith in him to take your sins away, then you're going to be that way, separated from God and your sins. But you don't have to be that way. Jesus could put you through the blood car wash, wash all over with his blood or whatever, if you want him to. Make you as righteous he is, as a gift. Can you understand that? Jesus wants to give us his own righteousness, as righteous as he is, so that he can relate to us. A holy sin, hating God, relating to an evil, sinful person but covered with the blood, his blood covered with his righteousness. Like the word justification or something. That uh, just as if I had never sinned, the wrath of God removed through the blood of the Lamb. I can still sin, I can have sin from my past, but it can all be as far as the east as the west in God's mind, in Jesus' mind. And we need to hear Jesus speak to us prophetically. That gives us joy and peace. We need to hear Jesus' voice say things to us like, Nothing will harm you. Don't worry about anything. Like I take care of the birds, I'll take care of you. Be joyful with me always. You're safe with me and my angel army. I can always give you ten times more than you need. My bank account never runs out even if the whole economy and the whole world collapses. I could turn your enemies to dust anytime like the Pharaoh's army at the Red Sea. Trust me like Moses did. Trust me like Paul did. Trust me like Jeremiah did or something. I can take all your sins away and make you as righteous as me as a gift. Just receive it. Believe in it and receive it. Perfect peace. Trusting in Jesus. Saved from the wrath through Jesus. The Lamb's been slain for my sins. I'm perfectly righteous in His eyes. 
That's the gospel message. That's the good news. Jesus came to make evil people good and joyful if they want him to. Jesus is trying to say to us, I am love. I greatly love you. You're my prized creation. I love and treasure you. That's why I came to earth and died on the cross, just so I could be with you now in eternity forever and marry you like a husband and a bridegroom. Jesus is trying to say to us, I'm your husband. Jesus is trying to say to us, I rejoice over you like a bridegroom rejoices over the bride today. Have your wedding dance with Jesus every day, full of joy. I love to love others through you. I love to love enemies through you. It's like Apostle Paul was an enemy of the church. The church was praying for him, and Jesus decided to give him the gift of salvation too. One minute he was trying to murder the Christians, the next minute he was trying to love the Christians. <laughs> and his old bosses were trying to murder him, I guess. It's like Joseph. His brothers are trying to murder him. They, he's in slavery to Egypt. The, his boss's wife is trying to falsely accuse him of rape and put him into prison. And that's Jesus' perfect will for him. Well, everything you see in the Bible was God's perfect will. There wasn't a mistake there. God makes no mistakes. Jesus makes no mistakes. Jesus loves our faith in him. Jesus loves our love for him. Jesus loves our obedience to him. It's the goodness of Jesus that leads to repentance, the change. You won't love Jesus unless you think he greatly loves you first. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey me. Jesus loves our prayers to him. He loves our thanks and praise to him. He loves our worship to him. He loves to see him living in us. He loves to see us joyfully praise him with dancing. Because we believe he's in full control. He greatly loves us. There's nothing too difficult for him to do for us. He says, nothing will harm you. I'll work it all up for your good. What did Joseph say? Oh, these people meant this for evil against me, but God worked it out for my good. And he tried to save people through a famine, through it too. But he needs a humble vessel to live in like Moses or Joseph or something who's willing to listen to him and do his will and not get all bothered by the evil land around him. Deuteronomy 28 says that uh, the judgments are that Evil people get evil rulers ruling over them. That's what we see in the world today. Evil rulers ruling over people. But there's blessings in Deuteronomy 28 too. For my friends, all these blessings. For my enemies, all these punishments and destructions like slavery and slaughter and mental illness. For his enemies. You don't have to be his enemy. You, could, you choose to be. When we get to heaven, we'll think it's all worth it. He'll, we'll have knowledge about how Jesus did great things for us on the earth, worked it all out for good. We'll never have to live in evil land anymore once we get to good land heaven. We'll think it's worth it. Like Mary and the perfect husband Jesus in heaven living in paradise forever once you drop dead. And uh, martyrdom can be good for you. Suffering love gets the greatest rewards in heaven. This is what Jesus is trying to prophetically say to us today, our source of fulfilling joy, Jesus.